Okay, so for this one, I'm gonna be doing sort of a loosely scripted kind of vibe. A little, a little bit of mouth diarrhea, if you will. That's what you guys are used to anyway. Well, if you read the title at all of today's video, I'm gonna be talking about things that, uh, that gave me the heebie-jeebies as a, as a little kid. Things that, uh, you know, gave me a little... Now, some of the things that scared me as a kid were a little bit more obscure. Reason being is because because I, I was homeschooled and I was very, very weird. I just grew up with a lot of weird media. Has anyone else, does anyone else in Gen Z share the same memories as me or am I just fucking weird and pathetic? Oh, oh I, oh I am? Oh, I, I am weird and pathetic. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll leave you alone. I'm. I'm sorry, I I'm sorry. The number one thing that freaked me out as a kid was Bible Man. Now, now hear me out. Just, just shut up, stop screaming. I'm gonna explain what this is. Bible Man was a TV show that ran around the, the time of 1995. That's when it began. Can't really recall what year it was when it ended though. But essentially it was this, this show and what I recall is, is it had this superhero named Bible Man. You know, he, he had a, a six pack and a, a funny looking helmet and uh, he would literally just, it, it wasn't all about peace and love basically. The guy was fucking murdering people with a goddamn lightsaber, okay? It was fucking awesome. It was one of, honestly one of the best animes I've, I've ever watched personally. Way, way better than Yu-Gi-Oh. Way, way better than all that shit. Uh, fucking Dragon Ball Z. It, these people had nothing on Bible Man. This guy was a fucking beast. He, he was a demigod. He, you couldn't stop him. He was horrible. On this show, they had two demons, I mean two villains, that absolutely terrified the shit out of me. Conveniently, it's the only two yellow looking people on the show, you know, Spongebob looking ass motherfuckers. The first one was this guy named the Fibbler, and I mean, I... and then there's also a Primordius Drool, I think his name was. I mean, I know a lot of people that look like that guy. Okay, I know unironically, and and none of them are okay. Bible man being the Chad that he is, and, and uh, you know, Jesus, and, and, and all that. He just kicks their fucking ass. And I, I don't even recall strictly what became of these villains, but I, I like to think that he just straight up fucking murders these people. They, I don't know. That's your fault, but my the only things I remember is, is the Fibbler and Primordius Drool. It was such a goofy show, but I stopped watching that show pretty quickly. I, I don't know why. I, I like to think it's because I, I think it was because my parents actually said I wasn't allowed to watch that show anymore. I think they realized what it was doing to me. It was changing me. See, I, I wanted to become Bible Man. I, I was Bible Man, whether they wanted to admit it or not. Okay, this one is deeply disturbing to me still today as an adult for a number of reasons. I mean, at least with Bible Man, I can I can laugh at that now. I'll give it a little. <laughs> Ain't that precious. This one, there's nothing. There's no charm. There's no sauce to it. There's no plot. It's just a fucking eldritch being. He appears. There's for for one. There's nothing there at first. You're just staring at a fucking field, and you're like, oh, that's well, that's nice. And then oh, oh, holy shit. Oh, there, there's a there's a house, a pink house. That's pretty cool. Oh, oh no. Oh, what's what's that? I'm. Just, I'm just gonna let this video clip speak for itself. For some reason, I have this weird memory of this character being called the Flying Dutchman, but apparently he's not. I don't know if that's some weird Mandela effect or if it's like an inside joke I had with my sister back in 2015. I don't know what the educational purpose is 
for this. There's there's no purpose. It's, you're not teaching kids anything. And also, like, who the fuck is this magic house guy anyway? Who is he? Is he an elf? Is he some sort of eldritch god? If this was a boss on Baldur's Gate 3, I, I would completely delete the game. I would give up. The magic house guy from Teletubbies, I think we all can agree. I, really, just a lot of stuff from Teletubbies in general made no fucking sense. Like, that's something that still bothers me as an adult. Like, <laughs> what was the moral lesson to any of it? Someone tell me. I wasn't exactly a super young kid when I stumbled across this. I believe I was around 13 or 14. So this was between the years of uh, 2015 and 2016 when I when I stumbled upon this, if I remember correctly. Um, but it was this character on YouTube known as Shay St. John. A lot of people in Gen Z and a lot of people a little bit older than me will probably remember this this thing. But to discuss it a little bit more detail, uh, Shay St. John was this character. Um, she was created by a guy named Eric Fournier who unfortunately passed away due to some health complications back in 2010. He, she was some sort of art project essentially that this guy came up with. The guy was really into filmmaking. So the story behind this character is that she was a model who got into a car wreck and then she had her limbs replaced with with mannequin parts and she was experimented on by the government like implants were put in her brain somehow i guess to spy on her i can't really blame the government at this point i mean i, I don't think anything that looks like this can be trusted she needs to be supervised please someone watch her after she was experimented on by the government she went crazy and she also has a a, a floating doll friend named Kiki. So so there's that. So all of that sounds fun and good. It sounds like a little bit of a deviant art character of sorts. You might be asking yourself, okay, well what's what's wrong with that? I'm gonna show you. Ah, hood, ah, hood, ah, hood. Hey, what is it? Hey, what is it? Hey, what is it? Hey, what is it? Are you still asking that question? Okay, so even though the original um, Shay St. John channel was deleted, you can actually find a few archives up on YouTube. And by the way, if you want any more information on Eric Fournier and, you know, all of the Shay St. John lore, um, I'm gonna pop a video up here on the screen somewhere. Go check this one out. <laughs> Okay, number four on the list. Um, again, this is another uh, older piece of media here that probably not a lot of people from my generation know about, but, but some probably do, and I don't know. Comment down below if you guys remember this also, but there's two puppets from the show Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, and before all the Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood stands come set me on fire and burn me at the stake, I, I just wanna say I, I love that show still. I have, it's very, very, <sighs> It's very near and dear to my heart, okay? Like, in all seriousness, I mean, Mr. Rogers, he was a great guy. I mean, who who couldn't love him? He, he was awesome. With that being said, as much as I do have love and a lot of fond memories of this show, <laughs> It had its moments, specifically with the puppet Lady Elaine. I mean, there's a goddamn creepypasta about this shit. I mean, what? I literally, genuinely, I had nightmares about this puppet. I did. I had fucking fever dreams about this. This was the shit that I had fever dreams. Like, when people talk about, like, fever dreams that they had as a kid, this is the shit that I would dream about. Fucking Lady Elaine. She is a menace, and we don't need her. Okay, just just throw her, throw her in the pile. Just just the pile. And then also right up there with her was some puppet named Cornflake. I I don't know his full name. I know that's not his full name. I I literally on the script I on, on in my notes I just wrote him down as Cornflake for some reason. Despite me not knowing his full name, I'll probably put it up on the screen. I probably already did at some point. Just look at him. Like what the fuck is that? Is that a weasel? Is is that a is that a naked mole rat? He looks awful. Someone get him help. Maybe some moisturizing cream. I mean, he would he would benefit greatly from it. I, I'm not judging. See, I'd be looking like this motherfucker when I don't have makeup on. I, I don't have much else to say about them other than these two puppets. Awful. Hated them. Just disgusting. Blech. Um, and we're gonna move on to the next part of my list. <laughs> Number five on my list is Between the Lines, and I, I'm not speaking for the whole show here because, again, I loved this show as a kid, but it, it, um, 
it, it had its moments. And, and specifically the fucking dancing smarty pants guy. I, I don't know his fucking name. I guess it's smarty pants. Smarty pants more like cargo shorts. In his hands. He had human hands. And the song dance, dance in smarty pants. Dance, dance in smarty pants. I, I hate it. Also take this one and put it in the pile. It's terrifying. I mean, he just is one of those things that I think falls into the uncanny valley, right? He just, he looked too fucking human and unhuman at the same time. Like his skin almost had like a weird fleshiness, like a pastiness. Maybe it's just because I see a little bit of myself in him. Uh, maybe I'm projecting here. Also the granny puppet. What, what the fuck is that? It, it's all lip. An eye! A and the fucking hands! What are those? Are those chicken feet? That shit needs to be in a fucking broth. Don't put that shit on a puppet. I mean, also the, the thing that also played into the creepiness for me was the fact that I just vividly remember seeing these two characters just dancing in like a void. Like, where the fuck are they? Are they in hell? Because that's where they need to be, quite frankly, I'm happy. And then another uh, puppet, specifically just one, it was like the tall singing lady, I don't know her name, but she was from the, the group, the Vowelettes, and they would basically just sing about vowels and, and stuff, and then, oh my god, she comes on! And I don't know what it is, but she's like, again, it's the uncanny valley. She just looks too human and not human at the same time. It just doesn't feel right, and the fact that she's implied to be this, like, fucking ten feet tall, it's, it's terrifying. Imagine you're trying to sleep and you see this fucking ten foot tall puppet lady standing in the corner of your room and then she's singing, Oh, wig! <laughs> wig vowels! <laughs> she didn't sound like that, by the way. I, I, I do want to say, the person who voice acted her or sang as her, very talented. What a bop. Musical genius. Just the puppet. They could have done better. Just make it look a little less human and more puppet-like, please. Okay, this one, number six, I, I, I know I've kept count partially here, so I'm all over the place. But uh, this next one is actually from Spongebob, and I believe the episode was called Survival of the Idiots. Genuinely, I mean, I feel like this was one of my first introductions to body horror um, since Patrick literally gets part of his head ripped off. I mean, anyone who remembers this episode, you're gonna understand. <laughs> you're gonna understand where I'm coming from. But just to run y'all up to speed, all I remember is Sandy becomes this buff Giga Chad, and then, you know, she starts chasing after um, SpongeBob and Patrick, and then at some point in the episode, they, they both fucking die. They just both fucking die. But um, it, it was terrifying just seeing this character that I used to be, you know, quite fond of as a kid. She just kind of turns into this, this Wolverine, this fucking monster. Like, she genuinely reached SCP status in that episode, at least for me. For whatever reason, my brain, my little brain couldn't handle it. So yeah, that episode scared the fucking bejesus out of me. I hated it. So again, that's another one that I'm tossing in the pile. Have we kept count of all the things that I've tossed in the pile? Okay, this other one, again, a little bit more, more obscure, I guess, at least for most people in my generation. But it's actually an old school Christmas movie. I believe it was Christmas in July or, or something like that. I could be getting the name wrong again. You can tell I didn't do a lot of research for this fight me, okay? I vaguely remember the whole premise of the movie, like I think Frosty the Snowman was in it, and like uh, th this ballerina lady, and then this, uh, this ringleader lady, and then there's Rudolph, and it, there's this guy, I think his name is Winterbolt. I remember that guy's name for some reason. I don't know why. But his name was Winterbolt. It's this old guy. He's like an ice wizard, you know, ice king type energy. And he's like, I don't know what the fuck he was doing. I think he's like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna steal Christmas. I'm gonna steal your Christmas Kringles. Um, and he has like this, this stick that's just made out of ice and that contains all of his powers. In my opinion, not a very good to invest your 
your powers in. You know, you should probably invest in like something better than that, like a, I don't know, like a Roth IRA or, or something like that. But anyway, towards the end of the movie, spoiler alert, not that any of y'all are gonna watch it, but <laughs> spoiler alert, they somehow defeat this guy. I, I don't know how it works, but his fucking, his ice shaft disintegrates. And he's like, oh fuck, oh God, did you guys not know when my ice shaft breaks, it turns me into a, a tree. And this, like, I, I feel like the creepy factor of this really settles in when you hear the, the actual audio. <laughs> I don't know what the voice actor was smoking on, but goddamn, that, that shit was horrifying. Have a listen. No! No! My, my powers are gone! When the scepter dies, I go too! I turn! I turn! Turn! I turn into a tree! Wow! <laughs> what an exit! R.I.P. Winterbolt, but goddamn. <laughs> that dude, whoever was voice acting that guy, he just channeled all of these abominations and demons that were possessing his soul, and it was, it was horrible. That shit genuinely traumatized me as a kid to the point where every time that scene would come on, I would cover my eyes. I couldn't look at it. It was, it was a big no-no for me. <laughs> Okay, this one shouldn't be too surprising to people, but obviously I have to put Herobrine on this list. I mean, back in the early 2010s, there was just so much media that consisted of fake Herobrine sightings. And I just remember, I don't know if this is a false memory or not, but I remember seeing a, a plethora of videos from Minecraft Pocket Edition, and this caused me to develop this sort of irrational fear of... <laughs> of Minecraft Pocket Edition. And I mean, to be fair, back then, you know, Pocket Edition was not nearly as robust as the PC version of Minecraft, which at the time was Java Edition. Okay, I'm geeking out here. I'm sorry. <laughs> Suki, you should just become a Minecraft YouTuber. SHUT THE FUCK UP! No. Shut your mouth. That is a sin. I'm not I'm not going there, not yet. But um, in all seriousness, it, it did genuinely cause me to develop this sort of irrational fear of Minecraft Pocket Edition, and I guess it's because Pocket Edition at the time, the earlier versions of it had this liminal feel to it, and it was very limited, and I don't know what it was, but there was a definite graphical disc difference for Pocket Edition back then compared to the PC version, and it just skipped the fuck out of me. All those videos of Herobrine showing up and stuff, it I would literally shut off the game for weeks. And then this later transitioned over to, you know, Java Edition, the, the version of Minecraft that I had on my PC. I would literally log out of my world and not play them for a whole week because I was scared. I was paranoid. I was like, oh, he's going to come and get me. Oh, no. Oh, sh shiver me timbers. But in all seriousness, that's a time in my life that I genuinely miss. Like, I genuinely miss being so easily scared by something. <laughs> I guess I'm saying that I miss being stupid. Uh, well, that, that part didn't change. At least we can all agree that part didn't change, but... Okay, this last one, I'm being honest, I remember absolutely nothing about this movie. I was way too young when I saw it. All I remember is seeing this thing. Leaving so soon. Sneak away. Well, what the fuck is that? It looks like a dog covered in mold. And again, it looks like something else that should be put in the pile, okay? I don't know what it is. Again, it's one of those things that has oddly human traits. Things that something like this should not have. A fucking furry does not need to have human traits, okay? That thing scared me as a child. Now, as an adult, I can look back on it and say, okay, well, that's actually pretty fucking cool. Like, whoever made that shit, that shit was elaborate as hell. It really makes, makes you miss, like, the practical effects that they use to use in the 80s and stuff and part of the 90s too like some of those practical effects and puppets and stuff that they used to have in those fantasy movies like you know exactly what i'm talking about like that shit can't even replicate it in today's era 
No, because we're a bunch of cowards, quite frankly. The never-ending story dragon um, scared me for reasons unknown to me. I mean, I don't know why this thing that looks like a, uh, an elderly Bichon freeze covered in, in slop and slime and, and drool. I, I don't know why that scared me, but it, it did. Okay, well, we have made it to the uh, bottom of the list. I've kind of bumbled a little bit through this video. Uh, hopefully, you guys enjoyed watching, and um, you know, come back to my uh, channel for more little treats like this. All right, bye for now, guys.